work on a super yacht, move up through the ranks, and maximize your potential. Head down to your local marina, and you will soon discover that all of the yachts are tied up with lines just like this. But, how do they attach them to the shore, and how do we attach them to the yacht so that they are safe, secure, and tight? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question, because today I'm going to answer it. I'd like to start by thanking my wonderful crew who, this week for my birthday, May 13th, put it in your diary, bought me a tripod on which to put my camera so that I didn't have to keep balancing it on random things around the yacht. Thanks guys, great present. When it comes to mooring, the action typically happens here at the aft mooring station with any number of capstans, bollards or fair leads, the number dependent on the size and type of yacht that you're working on. Or here, the forward mooring station. You will likely also find bollards amidships or on the swim platform, but these are not typically considered mooring stations in their own right. Only on much bigger yachts will you find that they have their own independent capstans. I'm going to make this, the forward mooring station, the subject of today's video because the deck hardware and some of the processes are a little bit more involved. Ultimately, the whole thing will be covered across two videos, part one and part two. This part being the preparation and sending of lines ashore. The second part being what to do once you have the lines ashore and you want to get them tightened up and secured on the yacht. To start with, it's safety first, and at the very least, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're wearing a pair of shoes. It may look more cool going barefoot and not getting any tan lines, but it's not gonna look so cool when you stub your toe on this, or this, or this, or worse still, get your foot trapped between this and this. Next up, we're going to need to get our lines ready. It should come as no surprise that this is not ready. Rather, we need to flake the lines out neatly on the deck so that they can run freely when we want to use them. There, much better. Trying to send a line ashore that's all tangled up is not a good idea. Now to get the line ashore, we use what's called a heaving line. In this case, it's 20 meters of three strand rope connected to a sandbag. You can buy these off the shelf or you can make up your own monkey's fist. You'll notice that it's attached to the three strand line with a splice, much more secure than a bowlin. And if you're not sure how to do this, head over to my rope work playlist to see how it's done. It's important that the heaving line also isn't a tangled mess. So let's start by flaking it out on the deck and getting rid of any tangles. Technically, I am not actually flaking this line, but this is sufficient for the purposes of this task. We now want to prepare the heaving line for use. So, you start with the sandbag or monkey's fist, and you start with six coils. One, two, three, four, five, six, then a nice big one, and a further six coils. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can now separate them at the long coil. The two coils can now be placed down neatly on the deck. You'll want to make sure that you set up your own heaving lines, because if somebody else does it, how do you know that they've got it just right? There are often times when it is of real importance that lines are put ashore quickly. If they end up in the water or tangled up on deck, 
it can cause serious problems for the captain. Now that the heaving line has been prepared, we need to connect it to the mooring line. In this instance, I would like to run this mooring line out of this fair lead. You'll notice it has two rollers on it, therefore it's a roller fair lead. Fair leads are not to be confused with freeing ports. Freeing ports are designed to quickly shed water in the event that the deck were to become flooded. Lots of water being trapped up on deck is not good for the stability of the yacht. They serve a second purpose, which is to allow us to see what is going on down on the waterline. However, this is not their primary purpose, and they are not, as I once heard before, called viewing ports. To ensure that the mooring line runs correctly out of the fair lead, we need to first run the heaving line back through the fair lead. So you take your loose end, run it over the side, and then bring it back through the fair lead. We are then ready to attach the heaving line to the mooring line. Now of course, the end of the line that we want to feed out first is the eye because that is what's going to be attached to the bollard on the dock. It may therefore be tempting to attach the heaving line to the end of the eye. However, I caution you against doing this. I just got rained off there for a minute, but we've got to get this video finished. So, where were we? Ah yes, connecting the heaving line to the mooring line. If you connect your heaving line here, at the end of the eye, there is a good chance that when it arrives ashore, the line handler won't remove the heaving line first. They'll put it on the bollard, and your heaving line will become trapped between the mooring line eye and the bollard. You'll not be able to get it off until you release tension on the line when you want to leave. Needless to say, this will get you a beer fine. That being the case, you'll want to tie your heaving line to the mooring line about here. My knot of choice for this is a simple clove hitch. And, just to be sure, I sometimes like to add one extra half hitch. And there it is. That's not going anywhere. And that's our mooring line all set up and ready to go. As you can see, there are a number of components and it can start to get quite messy. So you need to be really organized and know exactly where you've put everything. To recap, we've got our mooring line and I ready to go out of that fair lead. The heaving line is attached at the base of the eye and it runs through the fair lead. Heaving line then runs up over the bulwark and railing, down to the deck. Remember we've been through this, we know that there are no knots and then we run to our two coils. Coiled by you, ready to be thrown. Now we just need to make sure that we have our stopper lines ready to go. We'll discuss that in part two. And we need to check that our gear works. It continues to rain, but I need to get this finished, so let's press on. Now at the after mooring station, testing simply involves clicking back the cover on the switch and seeing that the capstan spins freely. Now at the forward mooring station, the process of preparing and checking is a little more involved because it's doubling as the anchor station. That being said, for safety reasons, the capstan is currently engaged with the gypsy wheel of the anchor chain. 
Why is this safer? Because if the brake on the anchor chain were to fail and the gypsy wheel were to run freely, it would be caught by the teeth of the capstan. Therefore, to use this capstan, we must first disengage these teeth. On this particular unit, I've got a crank which simply goes in the top and I wind it in an anti-clockwise fashion and you will see that the teeth start to disengage. And you wind it all the way up until it stops, at which point I go a quarter turn back so as not to jam up the capstan as it spins. Now you can see that the teeth are free to move. I can then simply press my control and see that the capstan moves freely in both directions. It is also good practice when mooring to have an anchor ready to drop. So, so long as I also remove the devil's claws, this anchor will all be ready to go, being held only on this brake. And in the event that it's needed, I can simply release this brake and the anchor will be able to drop. And that's it, ready to go. We've got a mooring line rigged with a heaving line. We've got a stopper line on hand, we'll cover that in the next section. And our capstan is rotating freely and ready to go. I'm getting absolutely soaked out here, but I'm determined to finish this, so all that's left to do is throw the heaving line. Remember, we've got our two coils. I'm a lefty, so I hold the coil with the sandbag in my left hand and the other coil in my right hand. Oftentimes, you don't have to actually throw this that far. Just make sure that you reach the dock, because remember, if you don't, there'll be another beer fine. As it goes, we are currently moored stern two, and the bow is not alongside the dock. I have therefore just thrown this heaving line straight into the water. That's the heaving line gone out. We now need to ensure that we control the mooring line as the line handler pulls it through the fair lead. The last thing you want to do is allow the mooring line to run out freely because of course the end isn't actually tied onto the yacht and if you let it the whole thing will run straight out of the fair lead. Right. The weather's finally starting to brighten up, so I think now will be a good time to finish off. The procedure that I've just described will always be used when working on the aft deck. The captain and or chief officer will say how many lines they want out, and you will rig them and send them ashore in exactly this way. Similarly, that will be the case on the foredeck when you are coming alongside the dock. However, you may have seen that, particularly in the Mediterranean, a lot of the yachts more stern too. In this instance, things are a little bit different and you are not securing your lines to the dock. Instead, three different methods are used or a combination of the three. Number one is anchoring. We will use our own anchors to secure the bow of the yacht and typically a small boat from the marina will instruct us where to place the anchors. Number two, we will use our own mooring lines. We will feed them down to that same small boat from the marina and they will attach them to a mooring buoy for us using a shackle. Number three is using ground lines. Ground lines are lines that are permanently connected to the seabed and they are passed up to us and then made fast on our bollards. In any event, with the exception of anchoring, the results will be the same. Lines will be connected to the dock, to the seabed, or to mooring buoys, and we will have the tails of those mooring lines running through the fair leads onto the yacht. That brings us neatly to the end of this video and the beginning of the next one, where we'll be tightening and securing the mooring lines to the bollards on the yacht, just like this one. 
Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I really do hope that you've learned something from this video. If you liked it, please click this and hit that subscribe button to stay notified of when the next one comes out. For any questions or ideas for videos you'd like me to cover in future, please just drop them in the comments below. I very much look forward to seeing you in part two, by which time I hope the barbershops have opened and I have a nice new haircut.